Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton, and in this video we're going to talk about the half angle formulas. So in the previous video we talked about how to use the double angle formulas to find exact values and also to use the double angle formulas to verify identities. In this video we're going to talk about how to use the half angle formulas to find exact values. So let's talk about the half angle formulas. The following formulas allow us to write any trigonometric expression involving even powers of the sine and cosine function in terms of the first power of cosine. This technique is really important in calculus for simplifying the integrands involving even powers of the sine and cosine functions. So the half angle formulas for immediate consequences of these formulas. So the theorem says formulas for lowering powers of trigonometric functions. The following formulas are called reduction formulas since they are used to reduce the power of a given trigonometric expression involving even powers of the sine or the cosine function. So sine squared of x is equal to 1 subtract cosine of 2x all divided by 2. So notice why it's called the reduction formula because you actually have sine squared on the left hand side of this identity and on the right hand side of the identity you have cosine to the first power but it's cosine of a double angle it's cosine of 2x and then you also have cosine squared of x is equal to 1 plus cosine of 2x all divided by 2 so again it's called a reduction formula because you start with cosine squared of x and you can reduce the power by using this identity to get cosine to the first power but it's cosine to the first power of the double angle 2x so notice how the sine squared of x and cosine squared of x, they are very similar in terms of the identities. You have 1 subtract cosine of 2x all divided by 2 for the sine squared of x, but then cosine squared of x you have 1 plus cosine of 2x all divided by 2. So they're very similar. And then the tangent squared of x can be reduced in terms of power as well by using the identity 1 subtract cosine of 2x all divided by 1 plus cosine of 2x is equal to tangent squared of x. And again, these are obtained from the double angle formulas for the cosine function. So the following example, we're going to show how to lower powers in the trigonometric expression to an expression involving the first power of the cosine function. So example three, we're going to lower powers in a trigonometric expression, express the trigonometric expression sine squared of theta times cosine squared of theta in terms of the first power of the cosine function using the reduction formulas for the lowering powers of trigonometric expressions. So we're going to start with sine squared of theta times cosine squared of theta, and we're going to reduce them in terms of powers to be just in terms of cosine to the first power using the formulas for lowering powers. So sine squared of theta was equal to 1 subtract cosine of 2 theta all divided by 2, and cosine squared of theta was 1 plus cosine of 2 theta all divided by 2 using the formulas for lowering powers for the sine function and also the cosine function. And again, those are obtained from using the double angle formulas for the cosine function. So now we have 1 subtract cosine to the first power of 2 theta all divided by 2, and 1 plus cosine to the first power of 2 theta all divided by 2. Well, now we need to multiply these two expressions together. Notice you have two terms in the numerator, and you also have two terms in the other expression in the numerator as well. And so you can use the FOIL method to multiply the numerators together. So you have 1 times 1, 1 times cosine of 2 theta, negative cosine of 2 theta times 1, and then also negative cosine of 2 theta times cosine of 2 theta, also in the numerator. And the denominator will be 2 times 2, which will give you 4. So when you multiply the numerator, you'll have 1 times 1 gives you 1, 1 times cosine of 2 theta will give you cosine of 2 theta, negative cosine of 2 theta times 1 will give you negative cosine of 2 theta, and then you have the last two terms multiplied together. They'll give you cosine of 2 theta times cosine of 2 theta, and the denominator was 4. So the middle two terms will cancel out because they're opposites of one another. They'll actually equal to 0 when you add. You have cosine of 2 theta, subtract cosine of 2 theta, that's 0. And then the first term will stay 1, and the last term, cosine of 2 theta times cosine of 2 theta, is really cosine squared of 2 theta, all divided by 4. So notice we've simplified the expression as far as possible, except now we have cosine squared of 2 theta. The power on the cosine function is 2, and so we can actually use the reduction formulas or the formulas for lowering powers again, where we can rewrite the cosine squared to be in terms of the cosine to the first power. So 1 subtract cosine squared of 2 theta, 1 will stay the same, but then cosine squared of 2 theta, let's use the formulas for lowering powers again. We have 1 subtract cosine squared of 2 theta is 1 plus cosine of 2 times the argument. So it's 2 times times 2 theta, and it's all divided by 2. So that's the numerator. 1 subtract cosine squared of 2 theta is 1 subtract 1 plus cosine 2 times 2 theta, all divided by 2 in the second term, and the denominator just stays 4. And so when you have 2 times 2 theta as the argument of the cosine function, that's really cosine of 4 theta. So the numerator is 1 subtract 1 plus cosine of 4 theta divided by 2 in the second term, or the second fraction. And now if you want to simplify even further, the numerator, you have two terms, you need to be able to subtract them, you need to have a common denominator. So the LCD, or common denominator, is 2, so you need to rewrite 1 to be 2 divided by 2. So the first term becomes 2, and then subtract 1, and then subtract cosine of 4 theta. The subtraction sign will affect the sign of both terms in the numerator of the fraction. it will be subtract 1 and subtract cosine of 4 theta. And then the common denominator was 2, or the LCD. And then it's still divided by 4. 
in the denominator. And so in the numerator, you have 2 subtract 1, that just becomes 1, and then you have subtract cosine of 4 theta, all divided by 2 in the numerator of the fraction, and then you multiply by the reciprocal because you're divided by 4, so you can multiply by the reciprocal 1 fourth. And so 1 subtract cosine of 4 theta divided by 2 times 1 fourth, and that will simplify to 1 subtract cosine of 4 theta divided by 2 times 4 will give you 8 in the denominator. So again, this technique to reduce or lower powers of trigonometric functions is particularly useful in calculus, where you want to rewrite powers of trigonometric functions to be in terms of cosine to the first power, like we did in this example. So now let's talk about the half angle formulas. So the theorem, the half angle formulas, the half angle formulas for the sine, cosine, and tangent functions are as follows. Sine of u divided by 2 is equal to plus or minus square root. In the numerator, you have 1 subtract cosine of u, and the denominator is 2. And that's all inside. The entire fraction is inside a square root. Cosine of u divided by 2 is, again, plus or minus square root 1 plus cosine of u in the numerator of the fraction divided by 2, and the entire fraction is again inside the square root. And then tangent of u divided by 2 is equal to 1 subtract cosine of u divided by sine of u, or is equal to sine of u divided by 1 plus cosine of u. The choice of plus or minus in terms of the sine of u divided by 2 and cosine of u divided by 2 depends on the quadrant in which u divided by 2 lies. So in other words, what is the angle u divided by 2? Whatever quadrant that lies in will determine whether it's a positive square root or a negative square root for the sine and the cosine half angle formulas. So example four, using the half angle formulas, find the exact value for the following trigonometric expressions. Number one, find out the value of sine of 22.5 degrees. Well, notice that 22.5 degrees is half of 45 degrees. So you can rewrite sine of 22.5 degrees as sine of 45 degrees and then divide by two. So notice that the numerator, the u, is 45 degrees. And so we can use the half angle formula for the sine function, which was sine of u divided by two. So notice that sine of 22.5 degrees, 22.5 degrees is in quadrant one, and the sine function is positive in quadrant one. And so we'll have positive square root for the half angle formula for the sine function. So sine of 45 degrees divided by two is equal to positive square root, one subtract cosine of u, so it'll be cosine of 45 degrees, all divided by two, and this fraction is entirely inside the square root. And then cosine of 45 degrees is equal to square root two divided by two. So the numerator of the fraction will be one subtract square root two divided by two, and then it's all divided by the denominator two, and that's all inside the square root still. So if you want to simplify, you need to get a common denominator for the numerator. You have one subtract square root two divided by two. You can only subtract those two terms with the common denominator, which will be two in this case. So you have one that will need to be changed to be two divided by two. So you have two subtract square root two divided by two. That's the fraction that you would get if you simplify the numerator. And since you're divided by two in the denominator, that's really multiplied by the reciprocal, which would be multiplied by one half. So you have inside the square root, two subtract square root two after you simplify the numerator, divided by two, that's the LCD and then multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator, which was multiplied by one half. So the numerator stays unchanged. It'll be two times one, that's two, and the negative square root two times one will be subtract square root two, and then the denominator will be two times two, which will give you four. And so you can take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately now. Square root of two subtract square root two is the numerator, and then the square root of the denominator will be square root of four, which will give you two. And so this is the exact value for the sine of 22.5 degrees. It's square root two subtract square root two in the numerator, and then you divide the entire numerator by two. So let's try cosine of 165 degrees. Notice 165 degrees is not part of the unit circle, but we can actually use a value from the unit circle if we notice that 165 degrees is actually half of 330 degrees. So the U in this case will be 330 degrees because you have 330 degrees divided by two, that's 165 degrees. So you'll have 330 degrees divided by two as the argument of the cosine function in this case. And notice that 165 degrees is actually in quadrant two. And so the cosine function we know in quadrant two is a negative value. So cosine of 330 degrees divided by two will actually be negative square root one plus cosine of u, so that's cosine of 330 degrees, all divided by two inside the square root. And so again, we need to simplify what's inside the square root. We have cosine of 330 degrees, that's equal to square root three divided by two. So in the numerator of the fraction, you have one plus square root three divided by two, and then all divided by two inside the square root. And now you need to simplify what's inside the square root in the numerator. So you have negative square root, get a common denominator of two. So you have two plus square root three divided by the LCD, which is two, and then multiply by the reciprocal again, because you're dividing by two. So be multiplied by one half. So you have negative square root, two plus square root three, all divided by two, and then multiply by one half, which is equal to negative square root, two plus square root three 
times 1 will stay the same, it'll be 2 plus square root 3, and the denominator will be 2 times 2, which will give you 4. And so inside the square root, you'll have 2 plus square root 3 all divided by 4, and there's a negative sign out in front of the square root. And again, you can take the square root of the numerator and square root of the denominator separately. And so you'll have cosine of 330 degrees divided by 2, which is cosine of 165 degrees, is equal to negative square root 2 plus square root 3 all divided by the square root of 4, which will give you 2. And so that's the exact value of cosine of 165 degrees. Don't forget about the negative sign in front of the square root because the cosine function is actually negative for quadrant 2, where 165 degrees would lie. Number 3, let's find out the value of tangent of 15 degrees. So in this case, 15 degrees is actually in quadrant 1, and so the tangent function we know will be positive. So tangent of 15 degrees can be rewritten as tangent of 30 degrees divided by 2, and so in this case, the u is 30 degrees in terms of the half angle formula. And so you will have tangent of u divided by 2 is 1 subtract cosine of u, so it will be 1 subtract cosine of 30 degrees divided by sine of u, which will be sine of 30 degrees. And so we can find out those values by using the unit circle. Cosine of 30 degrees was square root 3 divided by 2, and sine of 30 degrees was equal to 1 half. So in the numerator, you'll have 1 subtract square root 3 divided by 2, and the denominator will be sine of 30 degrees, which is 1 half. So you can get a common denominator to simplify the numerator. You have 1 subtract square root 3 divided by 2. The LCD in this case is 2. So the first term becomes 2, and it will be 2 subtract square root 3, and then it's all divided by the LCD, which was 2. And then since you're dividing by 1 half, you can multiply by the reciprocal, which is multiplied by 2. So it'll be 2 subtract square root 3 divided by 2 times 2. And so notice that you have 2 divided by 2 in the top and the bottom of the fraction, so this will simplify to 2 subtract square root 3. And so that's the exact value of tangent of 15 degrees. It'll be 2 subtract square root 3. Number 4, let's find out the value of sine of 3 pi divided by 8. So this time we have an angle that's actually in terms of radians. We have 3 pi divided by 8. Well, that means that u must be 3 pi divided by 4, because if you take 3 pi divided by 4 and divide by 2, you actually get 3 pi divided by 8. And so since this angle is actually in quadrant 1, we know that the sine function will be a positive value. So sine of u divided by 2 will be positive, which means that sine of 3 pi divided by 8 will be a positive value. So it will be positive square root, 1 subtract cosine of u, so it will be 1 subtract cosine of 3 pi over 4, all divided by 2 inside the square root. And so again, cosine of 3 pi over 4 is equal to negative square root 2 divided by 2. So you have 1 subtract negative square root 2 divided by 2. That will make it 1 plus square root 2 divided by 2. And the denominator just stays 2 as a fraction inside the square root. So again, you need to simplify the numerator of the fraction inside the square root. So you have 1 plus square root 2 divided by 2. The common denominator is 2. So you have 2 plus square root 2 all over 2. Divided by 2 means multiply by the reciprocal 1 half inside the square root. So you have 2 plus square root 2 divided by 2 times 1 half. The numerator will stay unchanged, so it'll be 2 plus square root 2 as the numerator of the fraction, and the denominator will be 2 times 2, which will give you 4 as the denominator of the fraction inside the square root. And so now you can take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately. So you have square root of 2 plus square root 2 all divided by the square root of 4, which will be 2 in the denominator. So the exact value of sine of 3 pi divided by 8 is square root 2 plus square root 2 all divided by 2. So let's try one more. Number 5, cosine of 11 pi divided by 12. So notice 11 pi divided by 12 is actually in quadrant 2, so the cosine function will actually be a negative value. So this time the answer will be a negative value. So 11 pi divided by 12 is actually half of 11 pi divided by 6. So in this case the u will be 11 pi divided by 6. Because u divided by 2 is 11 pi divided by 6 divided by 2, which will be 11 pi divided by 12. So since cosine is a negative value, we'll have negative square root 1 plus cosine of u. So it'll be 1 plus cosine of 11 pi over 6, all divided by 2 as a fraction inside the square root. And so cosine of 11 pi over 6 is equal to square root 3 divided by 2. So you have negative square root 1 plus square root 3 divided by 2, and that's all divided by 2 as a fraction inside the square root. And again, you need to simplify. So inside the square root, you have 1 plus square root 3 divided by 2. The LCD for the numerator of the fraction is 2. So you need to rewrite 1 as 2 over 2. And so you have 2 plus square root 3, all divided by 2, the LCD. And then divide by 2 means multiplication by the reciprocal, 1 half. So you have negative square root, 2 plus square root 3, all divided by 2. And then multiply by the reciprocal, 1 half which means that you'll have negative square root. The numerator is multiplied by 1, so 2 times 1 gives you 2, and square root 3 times 1 gives you square root 3, but the denominator is 2 times 2, which will give you 4. And again, you can take the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator separately. So you have negative square root, 2 plus square root 3 in the numerator, and then the square root of 4, which is simplifies to 2 in the denominator. And so again, this is the exact value for cosine of 11 pi divided by 12. It's negative square root, 2 plus square root 3, that's inside the square root of the numerator, all divided by 2. 
So let's finish up this video by talking about example 5, evaluating an expression with trigonometric functions. Given the following information, evaluate the following trigonometric expressions using the half angle formulas. So we're given the value of tangent of theta is negative 8 divided by 15, and theta is greater than pi over 2, but less than pi. So that means that theta is actually in quadrant 2. So that means sine of theta will be positive, and cosine of theta will be negative, because we're in quadrant 2. So number 1, let's find out the sine of the half angle, theta divided by 2. So since theta is in quadrant 2, we'll actually have the sine function be positive. So that means we'll have sine of theta divided by 2 is equal to positive square root 1 subtract cosine of theta all divided by 2. So we need to find out what is the value of cosine of theta. So let's use a Pythagorean identity. We're given the value of tangent of theta. We need to use a Pythagorean identity. Tangent squared of theta plus 1 is equal to secant squared of theta. And from secant of theta, we can actually find out the value of cosine of theta. So secant squared of theta is equal to tangent squared of theta. Well, tangent of theta was negative 8 divided by 15. So we'll have negative 8 fifteenths, and that's all squared. And then we need to add 1. So it'll be 64 divided by 225 plus 1. And if you get a common denominator, you'll have 64 over 225 plus 1 is 289 divided by 225. And this is equal to secant squared of theta. And so if you want to get secant of theta by itself, take the square root on both sides of the equation. And so secant of theta will be plus or minus square root of 289 divided by 225 inside the square root. Since we know that cosine of theta is negative, that means the secant function of theta will also be negative. So secant of theta will be negative square root 289 divided by 225 inside the square root. And so the square root of 289 is equal to 17, and the square root of 225 is equal to 15. So secant of theta will be negative 17 fifteenths. And so cosine of theta is the reciprocal of the secant function. So cosine of theta will be the reciprocal negative 15 seventeenths. And so now we found out the cosine function of theta was negative 15 17. So let's also find out the sine function because we're going to need it for later. So tangent of theta was negative 8 15, which we know that tangent of theta was sine of theta divided by cosine of theta using the identity for tangent of theta. So that means the left hand side, tangent of theta is negative 8 15, and the right hand side, sine of theta will be the numerator. We're going to find out what the value of sine of theta is, and the denominator, cosine of theta, which is found out, was negative 15 17. So if you want to get sine of theta by itself, you can take negative 8 15 times negative 15 seventeenths, and you'll find out that sine of theta is equal to 8 seventeenths. So now let's go back to the original problem. We want to find out what is sine of theta divided by 2. It doesn't mean that it's the value of sine of theta and then divide by 2. It means we need to use the half angle formula. So if sine of theta divided by 2 was square root, positive square root, because we know the sine function is positive, 1 subtract cosine of theta all divided by 2. Cosine of theta we found out was negative 15 seventeenths. So let's make that replacement for the numerator of the fraction inside the square root. So we have 1 subtract negative 15 seventeenths, and it's all divided by 2 inside the square root. So that means you have 1 plus 15 seventeenths in the numerator, all divided by 2 inside the square root. And then you need to get a common denominator of 17 to simplify the numerator inside the square root. You'll have 17 divided by 17 plus 15 divided by 17, that's 32 seventeenths, times the reciprocal when you divide by 2, that means multiply by 1 half. So 32 seventeenths times 1 half will give you 32 thirty-fourths. And so that's inside the square root. Square root of 32 divided by 34, that can be simplified. 32 divided by 34 is actually 16 seventeenths. So you have square root 16 seventeenths. And then if you take the square root of the numerator, you'll have square root 16, which will give you 4. And the square root of the denominator will give you square root of 17. And then if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root 17 divided by square root 17, you have 4 square root 17 divided by 17. That's the value of sine of theta divided by 2. So number two, let's try finding out the exact value of cosine of theta divided by 2. So since theta is between pi over 2 and pi, theta divided by 2 will actually be in quadrant 1. And so cosine of theta divided by 2 will actually be a positive value. So we have square root 1 plus cosine of theta all divided by 2 inside the square root. And so cosine of theta we just found out was negative 15 seventeenths. So we have square root 1 plus negative 15 seventeenths, and that's all divided by 2. And again, if you want to simplify the numerator of the fraction inside the square root, you need to find a common denominator because you have 1 to track 15 seventeenths. The LCD is 17. So it would be 17 divided by 17 to track 15 divided by 17. That's 2 seventeenths. And if you divide by 2 inside the square root, you will be multiplied by 1 half inside the square root. And so 2 seventeenths times 1 half, the 2's will cancel out. And so you have 1 seventeenth, and that's inside the square root. And then if you want to take the square root of a fraction, you can take the square root of the numerator and square root of the denominator separately. So square root of 1 gives you 1, and square root 17 will be the denominator. And if you rationalize the denominator by multiplying the top and the bottom of the fraction by square root 17 divided by square root 17, you have square root 17 divided by 17. That's the value of cosine of theta divided by 2. And then number three, let's find out the value of tangent of theta divided by two. So we're going to use the half angle formula for the tangent function now. So tangent of theta divided by two was one subtract cosine of theta divided by sine of theta. Well, earlier we found out the value of cosine of theta and also sine of theta. So we can make those substitutions in the numerator and denominator. So one subtract cosine of theta will be one subtract negative 15 seventeenths. That's the value of cosine of theta. 
And then the denominator, sine of theta, we found out was 8 seventeenths. So we'll be 1 subtract negative 15 seventeenths in the numerator and 8 seventeenths in the denominator. So you have 1 plus 15 seventeenths in the numerator and, and then divide by 8 seventeenths in the denominator. So if you simplify the numerator, you'll have 32 divided by 17. And then the denominator is 8 seventeenths. So since you're dividing by fractions, you can multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator and you'll have 32 seventeenths times 17 divided by 8. And so that will simplify just to be 4. So tangent of theta divided by 2 is equal to 4. So this finishes our video on half angle formulas. We use the half angle formulas to find exact values. If you have any questions about any examples of this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about solving basic trigonometric equations.